My name is George Dempsey and I live in the village of East Hampton and I've been there for about 20 years now. So I'm a family doctor and this is where I've been. Uh, well, I was aware of it and it was the first person to warn the town that the virus was going to be hitting us. And it's in the local papers uh, that uh, I was the canary in the coal mine. and Spoke to the town board to let them know and within two weeks that's when it hit. I uh, took the initiative and they had a lockdown of the building. The front doors were monitored and people had to be checked for fever if they had any symptoms. And the whole office was actually shut down to seeing anybody except for any emergent uh, problems. We transferred all of our exam rooms into telemedicine rooms. So all of my staff came to work every day. Uh, but everybody went into their own respective room. So even our contact amongst each other was very low. What was interesting is that when I did this, other doctors in, in my building were upset. In fact, one of them actually called the Department of Health to complain about me. And they did not get a response. Uh, so it was an interesting time that even amongst colleagues, they weren't ready to deal with this yet. I saw it happening once I saw that it was spreading in China and China was able to lock down a whole section of the country and control it. I said, we're never gonna be able to do that in this country. This country will never be able to have that kind of discipline. And it turned out to be, as we know, quite true. We have very little discipline over this and very little agreement. My first memories are on video with people laying in bed with their family around them, um, very looking very, very sick. And it's sort of a helpless feeling of just not being able to touch or feel them or really be there. We didn't even have testing. And I actually knew a researcher in Boston that had a facility that could do testing before it was even available. And I would actually fly my airplane with samples to Boston for her to run the labs there. So I'm a private pilot and I had the opportunity to bring those samples and uh, get results in a few days when most people weren't getting any results or it was taking a week to get results. Um, that's how it started. It's uh, amazing how much you can diagnose just by talking to someone and really getting a good, clear story from them. You know, there's situations where you have to examine and uh, you know, for examples would be like abdominal pain. You, can't see it or feel that you really have to touch it to see where it hurts. But especially people who have, say, chronic problems on multiple medications, a lot of it's just managing a lot of information. And a lot of medicine is information management, and it's become more like that. Using telemedicine to get access to people who otherwise don't come in or don't easily get things done because uh, of their busy lives and so forth, I think it's helped get access for those people. One of my memories that comes out is one was speaking with a teacher uh, and they were describing what was happening to students with the telemedicine in the middle school and how the best performing students were declining. Ironically, I mean, the ones that you're in touch with, they don't seem as sick as you would think. A lot of people had very low oxygen levels, but were not aware. And I've had some patients where I saw them and I thought you ought to be seen, but they said, I'm okay. And then they didn't make it to the next day. I did a house call on an elderly lady. She was in her 90s. So I remember she was just pleasantly smiling, looking at me. And her breathing didn't look like she was working hard. But if you really watched, you realized that it was going very rapid but very shallow. So you wouldn't pick it up unless you were really measuring the rate of respiration. But you would look at them and you wouldn't even know. And her oxygen levels were very low and you know, she, we sent her to the hospital but she didn't make it. So that's kind of what I've seen in other things where people have had stomach ache and you know, diarrhea and stomach problems. And otherwise they didn't have any other complaints, but he said, you know, you should go get checked at the hospital. And then when they get there, they're in there for a month with low oxygen levels that they didn't even know. 
So that, that was kind of the most striking thing about this illness. It was hard to know how sick they were just by looking at them, especially over video conferencing. The Department of Health was not involved with vaccination. But the town board here recognized that there's no one else that's going to do this, so we better do this and take Dr. Dempsey's ideas of setting up a big vaccination center and vaccinating the town. And the community did it all on their own. And I think that's pretty unique compared to other communities. Honestly, Maybe one of the things was trying not to get so involved with the town, the vaccination centers, the, all the efforts that I had it took a real toll on me in the practice. And uh, maybe it's not being so much of a hero and trying to accomplish all this. Like today we're vaccinating you know, 60 people at least or more on top of our everyday work. And so sometimes I question, why am I always the one that's trying to do everything? And they can go to a vaccination center or they can go somewhere else. But that's what I do. Transformational. You know, the people use disruptive a lot, but I think beyond disruptive, it's, trans it's transforming us. We're dealing with a reality just like we have for, you know, since mankind began. It could be, have been a world war, it could have been another plague in the other past. Believe it or not, I've been really fascinated with all this, what's happening, and in some ways excited to see change and people evolving and adopting new technologies, but also looking at ourselves, and it's pushing us into another society. Social change, I think. And uh, I like change. Hope, I'm hopeful that it means something better will be there, of course. Thank you.